Ah, uh, the 1940s. Gorgeous waves and rolls, and simple yet effective makeup. These looks are so classic, and so are the women sporting them. Did they have pink hair? Absolutely not! <laughs> Do I let that stop me? Almost never! During World War II, most women who weren't serving the war effort directly were employed doing essential work, so that men were free to serve in the armed forces. This meant having hair tucked away in a neat manner to keep it safe, and minimal makeup. Today we're taking inspiration from the 40s, and specifically X Company's Aurora, and we're going to create a style that can look beautiful during the day, and will assist with transition into an evening look. The first part of this look is the makeup and it's super simple. You can totally do it right before you go to work or school or puppy walking or panda hugging. That's a real job. I saw it in the news. You can be a professional panda hugger. Anyway, the first thing we are using is Smashbox Softbox palette. It looks like this, except maybe yours is cleaner because it hasn't been all bunged up from being in your makeup bag. The color we're using is just a super soft beige right in the middle here. You don't really want a whole bunch of eyeshadow right now. We're just trying to give the effect of a slightly heavier lid. The idea of this is the barely there makeup. You know how you hear guys say like, oh, I like girls better when they don't wear makeup, but they're actually just women wearing like beige makeup. It's, it's the same amount of makeup as it's just beige. Now I'm gonna use the pencil brush to just kind of drag the color under my eyes a little tiny bit. We're going for subtle here, so don't pull a crow and make yourself look like the crow from the crow. Next is eyeliner. I'm using two different products. The first one is Urban Decay Glide On Eye Pencil. I can read. And the second is NYC, uh, uh, I don't know, I wore the label off. But it's eyeliner! It's liquid eyeliner! Use your head. So the pencil I'm just gonna use like on the inside of my eyelid. Now we're gonna do a little bit of eyeliner on top, but barely anything. That's hard for me. It might be easy for you, but <laughs> the temptation to do it just a huge cat eye is very real and very serious for me. And now for mascara, I'm using my new Old Faithful. There was probably a better way to say that. My favorite current eye mascara, which is Benefit They're Real. I love the bristles on this thing. They're so spiky. So today we're gonna to be using Russian Red from MAC. I don't think I've ever finished a whole tube of lipstick, because I don't wear lipstick that much, but like Russian Red, I'm like halfway through. It's incredible. Boom. It's so bright. Ugh, I love red lipstick. I don't know about you, but as someone who has naturally straight hair, the longer I go in the day with my curls, the more they kind of fall out. So this is a hairstyle that's tucked away, got your curls all pinned up nice so that when you take the hairstyle out, they'll be beautiful. They'll be so nice. So to start with, you're gonna wanna have your hair already curled. There's a lot of ways to do this, how I do it is that I wet set pin curl my hair because it makes way less damage on your hair and as someone with bleached hair, I care about that. I actually have a tutorial already up on how to wet set pin curl your hair. If you want to watch that, click right here. Oh, nice. If your hair is really healthy and silky and shiny, you'll probably notice that you have trouble getting these hairstyles to stay because your hair just wants to fall out of it because it's so darn healthy. I don't have that problem. But dry shampoo, just a little bit sprayed throughout your hair, gives your hair texture, gives bobby pins something to cling to so that your hairstyle can actually stay in place. So taking our rat tail comb, we're gonna make a part on the side of our head. So whatever side of your head that you put most of your hair on, you're gonna take a chunk from that section. And this section, we're gonna start turning towards the back of your head like this. So it kind of creates this little sort of roll of volume right here. And then we're gonna pin that. We're gonna take a side section here and just pin it out of the way for a second. Take another piece. The whole point of what we're doing right now is dividing our hair into thirds. Taking this piece in the back, we're gonna brush through it. The key here is to try to get all of your curls into one big curl. Start gently and carefully winding your hair around two fingers. And then, hopefully, you're left with something a little bit like this. When you're happy with it, 
shove some bobby pins in it. After you've got this middle piece all pinned and safe and secure, we're gonna start on this one, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. You'll notice that as I start winding the hair up, I start doing that with my other hand to kind of tuck everything in. Otherwise, you'll get a lot of loose flyaways. Once you pin the side piece up, we're going to move on to the last one, which is this bit over here. My method and biggest tip for any hairstyle that's kind of sculptural, especially rolls or victory rolls or anything, is this. Fiddle, spray, pin. Fiddle with it, make it good, spray it with hairspray, and pin it. And do that a couple times until it looks the way you want it to. And this is the finished look. It's kind of rosettes, kind of swirls, and it's going to keep our hair tight and close to the head uh, so that we can go about our busy lives. <laughs> Super busy. Stay tuned until next week where we'll recreate the victory rolls that Aurora sports in X Company for a night of espionage. To clarify, Aurora would be doing the espionaging, not me. Or maybe I will!